A YouTuber is somebody who makes videos for YouTube. For the lucky few, it can even become a full-time job where you earn money through AdSense. But AdSense isn't always a reliable stream of income, thanks to the ever-shifting algorithm and the occasional demonetization. So many YouTubers turn to other ways of making money. The most common ways are by sponsors, or by selling merch, or creating a way for the viewer to send money to you directly, like with a Patreon. Sometimes YouTubers will even take it a step further by offering unique merch or services, like a newsletter, wine, or even an entire fast food chain. But the most unique ways YouTubers expand their merchandise, at least to me, is through video games. Today I want to talk about and show off a lot of video games made by YouTubers. As someone whose two main hobbies for most of their lives have been YouTube and video games, this of course is a very interesting topic for me. But I feel like this topic is also very interesting in a broad sense. Because most YouTubers who make games aren't experienced game designers. In fact, many of these people who are professional YouTubers are just regular people who started making videos videos for fun. It just feels kind of random that a cooking channel or a comedy channel that may be run by just a handful of people have their own video game. Many of these games even come from YouTube channels that don't have anything to do with gaming in the first place. This is why I associate YouTuber games more with merchandise rather than an extension of their content or the creator branching out to try new things. I'd probably say that about a YouTuber movie as that feels more natural and makes a lot more sense logically speaking. Not to mention the YouTubers themselves aren't typically the developers and have a team carrying the project. When I take a step back and look at the history of YouTuber games, it just feels so random and out of place. Regardless of what the YouTuber's original intention is when making the game, the end result often feels like a passionless cash grab, or at the very least, they're usually just low quality games. And no, not every single game that I'll be covering today fall in line with what I've been saying. There are of course some exceptions. I previously reviewed some PewDiePie games and a couple of them were very fun, well-made games. There are also also some game developers turned YouTubers, and YouTubers whose main form of content is making video games, like Danny. But I'm not very interested in covering those games, at least not today. I'm more interested in YouTube channels like Fred who have no business having a video game in the first place. And there is a lot of games made by YouTubers out there, way more than I thought. Like would you have guessed that Keemstar has his own video game? I won't be covering every single game made by a YouTuber in this video, as that would easily make this video at least an hour long. But if this video does well, I'll try and finish off the list of games another time. I will not be including any YouTuber cameos, voice acting, mods, skins, or anything else basic like that. I also won't be talking about publishers or board games. The games also must be completed for me to talk about. So no, I will not be talking about the infamous Yogscast game. Maybe in a future video I'll cover some of these topics, but just not today. And I do already have many more in-depth videos covering games made by YouTubers that I won't be talking about here. So if you want to know about any of these games, feel free to check out the playlist in the description before or after this video. But other than that, let me know in the comments what other games you want me to cover, and if this video does well enough, I'll make a video covering them. I'll be going over these games in no particular order. Now how about we start with something simple. Dude Perfect. They are a huge YouTube channel with almost 60 million subscribers. Most of their content revolves around making insane trick shots, but they have a surprising amount of unique content as well. They even had their own show on Nickelodeon. Their first two games are no longer available for download, but they were called Dude Perfect and Dude Perfect 2. Very little footage of the first game exists, but they seem to both play the same. The goal of these games are to land impressive trick shots, much like their own videos. Some of these levels seem to be straightforward, but others seem to be more of a puzzle. These games seem like fine, basic mobile games from what I can tell, albeit nothing special. At least the visuals in the second game are a great improvement from the first. I wish I could play them myself to give a better opinion, but unfortunately they're lost to time. But looking at the footage, I really don't think I'm missing out on much. And by the way, many of the games I'm covering today have been lost to time as well. And as I go on, I'll make sure to make it clear which games I have and haven't played. Anyway, to give us a good idea what kind of quality these two games were, we can take a look at their third game which is still available for download, Endless Ducker. It's an endless runner game where you duck and jump and that's it. The premise is based off how one of their members, Cody, is really tall and often ducks in real life. How thrilling. Anyway, this game could have been fine for what it is, but I experienced a lot of lag while playing it, which is super sad because I was playing it on the iPhone 13. I would honestly say that the lag renders this game unplayable since it's all 
about reaction time. So yeah, the lag here does not give me a good feeling towards their other two previous games. And it's very humorous watching Dude Perfect themselves react to the impossible situations the game throws at them. Oh wow, what a- yeah. oh! Fred is one of the OG channels of YouTube created by Lucas Cruikshank. I think I'm pronouncing that last name right. At one point, Fred was the most subscribed to YouTube channel of all time. At some point way after that, Lucas sold the channel to some company and completely different videos were uploaded. But those videos did not take off at all. And the YouTube channel has since been dormant for seven years. However, Lucas is still active on another YouTube channel. The original Fred content was mostly all sketches about the life of a made-up character named named Fred Figglehorn. There were recurring characters that were never shown on screen, not until the Nickelodeon movies at least. The two relevant characters to this game are Judy, who Fred has a crush on, and Kevin, who is Fred's bully. I played this game back in 2020 for a video, and Lucas himself even commented on the video which is still mind-blowing to me. I also ranked every single Fred song. I'll link the video in the description if you want to watch it after. Anyway, the game's called Fred Figglehorn. It starts with a cutscene. Mostly... Oh, is this... Is that Judy? Judy? It's Judy. What? Very abrupt ending, I know, but you just gotta love it. The entire gameplay is just running away from Kevin. That's it. Playing the game kind of hurts my eyes, and the obstacles come too quickly too early to make this worth playing. There's only one level, but there's two different themes. A winning run takes less than two minutes, and all that happens at the end is Fred gives Judy a flower. Maybe the game is archived somewhere. I didn't look into it too much, but the death of Flash killed this game as far as I can tell. The Annoying Orange is another old-school YouTube channel. Channel. But this one is still very active and uploads across a few different channels. However, the views aren't what they used to be, and many of their channels are now dormant. Not to say the channels that still post don't get any views at all. They're doing fine for themselves. Anyway, their content is some of the most obnoxious stuff you can find on the website, if you couldn't tell by the name. All of the videos revolve around these fruit characters doing a wide variety of stuff. The channel's been around for so long and has so many videos, it's hard to generalize the wacky situation these fruit find themselves in. There was an official Annoying Orange app that was a hub for all Annoying Orange videos across all of their channels, very similar to the Smosh Hub I talked about in a different video. But this one takes it a step further and has a social media tab where you can see and interact with posts from Annoying Orange characters. You can also create your own posts and add your friends and talk to them. This app no longer exists, which I'm thankful for, as the social media part was really asking for trouble. It's also worth noting the existence of this interactive Annoying Annoying Orange book that requires an app called Zapper to get the full experience. Zapper isn't made by the creators of the Annoying Orange, and works for a bunch of different stuff, but I found this interesting enough to include it. Anyway, this kind of works like a virtual pop-up book. You can scan the book at certain spots and get exclusive content. There's even some interactive games as well. And this still works if you buy a copy of this 2014 book for yourself. Let's now dive into their two mobile games. I unfortunately played both of these games as they're still available for download. Let's start with Annoying Orange Carnage. Classic mode is just one of those toss the object into the goal games, like Paper Toss. In this case, you're throwing fruit into a blender. Meanwhile, the annoying orange and other characters make obnoxious dialogue. Pepper, 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 pepper. Whoa! What's going on out here? The goal is to get to as high of a level as possible before the time runs out. And each level gives you more blenders and more characters to throw. The balloon mode is essentially the same thing, but you now have to pop balloons that float by. And endless mode is just an endless version of classic. I don't even think I need to explain how annoying this game is in general, and no, it does not play well either. I really never got the hang of it, and oftentimes I couldn't throw the fruit consistently in any direction. If you've played this and disagree about the level of quality that this game is, I'm willing to accept the fact that I might be bad at annoying Orange Carnage, but to me this game did not feel very polished at all and it was really inconsistent with the throws. Splatters Up is one of those games where you launch an object to see how far it can go. I I believe they're commonly called distance games. The most popular one I can think of is Toss the Turtle, and this is a very bad version of that type of game. Ready? Here I come, right down the pipe! 
Yeah, that's the game. There's power-ups you get over time, and you're supposed to go further and further with every throw. But this just feels so dull. And I used to be a big Trollface launch fan, so I think I know what I'm talking about. Yes, I'm biased in the sense that I hate the annoying orange, but this is just the most generic, boring, and uninspired version of this type of game that I've played. If you want an example of a good game like this, then we can look at The Odd Ones Out Let's Bounce. The Odd Ones Out is an animation and storytime YouTuber with over 18 million subscribers. And this game already starts out on a good note, as this is not a YouTuber that I hate. It starts off with a quick cutscene where he expresses wanting to be a kid again, and then you start the game. The main gimmick here is that you're going through time so you can be a kid again, and I would say this is a solid distance game. It's no troll face launch, but that would be asking a lot. But if we're comparing this game to the Annoying Orange game, just look at them side by side, and tell me you can't tell which game is more exciting and charming. The gameplay heavily relies on a bouncing mechanic to keep the momentum going. I think it's a very fun mechanic. You can keep runs up for a while and save runs that seemed futile with great timing, which is very rewarding. I don't know the Odd Ones Out's videos too well, but there seems to be a lot of references to him, and it's all done in his art style, which I suppose you could say the same thing for the Annoying Orange game, but this one's actually fun. The Game Grumps are a Let's Play channel with over 5 million subscribers hosted by two guys named Daniel Avedon and Aaron Hansen. The channel's seen a few different hosts, and common guests, but nowadays it's mostly just the two playing video games with the occasional guest. However, behind the scenes they seem to have a decently sized team, and have even branched out with other ventures like their touring company, and game publishing and developing team. Their first game was Dream Daddy. Dream Daddy is a dad dating simulator where you play as a dad, and your goal is to meet and romance other hot dads. It's not a game I would ever play, but I just don't think I'm the target audience. I watched some Let's Plays online to get an idea of it, and it looks exactly like it sounds. The game was mostly positively received, but there was a bit of controversy with people saying it was directly pandering and taking advantage of the LGBTQ plus community. As someone who's not a member of the LGBTQ but just an ally, I don't feel like it's my place to comment here and this also it just isn't a game that I'm ever gonna play. So if you're curious about the game, I recommend doing your own research and forming an opinion for yourself. Soviet Jump Game is not developed by Game Grumps, just published by them. I know at the start of the video I said I would not cover games published by YouTubers, just developed. But I wrote this before realizing they weren't the developers, so I'm letting this one slide. It's a 2D platformer battle royale that has a lot of Russian jokes. That sure didn't age well. It has a lot of power-ups and fun obstacles to traverse. I actually played it a bit right when it first came out, and I had a lot of fun with it. Unfortunately, I also played the game a week after its initial release, and I noticed a lot less people were already playing it. So maybe that was just my experience, but I don't think it was very popular popular for her long at all. I played it again just now for the sake of this video and I managed to get into the top 10 with only encountering one other player who quickly killed himself as soon as he saw me. Same thing happened with the only other player I encountered towards the end. So for that match I was really questioning whether I was playing with real people or bots. However my next match was really really fun. Everything was just how I remembered it. And I even managed to get first place. Epic Mealtime used to be a massive channel on YouTube with over 7 million million subscribers. It was created by Harley Morenstein. Their videos involved them making ridiculous and over-the-top meals. They had many inside jokes and recurring characters that helped keep their videos entertaining. Nowadays, uploads are infrequent. And their most recent videos are about the creator clash that Harley was a part of, who coincidentally kicked Aaron from Game Grumps' ass. The Epic Mealtime game, I believe, is just called Epic Mealtime. And unfortunately, no, it is no longer available to download. All you do is swipe meat and alcohol into Harley's mouth and swipe away the vegetables. When you swipe a giant pig in his mouth, you have to tap to swallow it. You lose when you mess up three times in a row. There's cosmetics that offer power-ups, and challenges that I was never able to find footage of. And the music actually kinda slaps. So yeah, this just feels like another whatever game. Sunday is a massive YouTuber with over 21 million subscribers. He creates gaming content on a few different games, most notably Minecraft, Fortnite, and Among Us. He's one of those YouTubers who just kinda yells a lot. His words, not mine. Anyway, his game is called Idle 2. It's an idle game where you grow your YouTube audience and get views. The game starts off with you just tapping the screen to record over and over, and that's how you get views and subscribers. Eventually you get more setups to record more, meaning more views and subscribers. You'll also quickly get an editor who introduces the idle side, because without them you'll have to do everything yourself. Kind of like real life, I guess. There's of course a lot of gimmicks to help you get more views, and plenty to level up, just like any idle game. And after every time you level up, you have to 
completely restart, but you get some new perks every time. I did play this a bit myself, and I know idle games are made to be played over a long period of time, so I didn't really allow myself enough time to get the full experience, but from what I can tell, it's a fine idle game, but not one I plan on continuing. So I know I need to address this, as many people are going to make the comparison. Is Idle Tuber a Tuber Simulator ripoff? Yeah, kind of. I'm not saying YouTubers can't make idle games, but two idle games about being a YouTuber. That's kind of a weird coincidence. It feels like this game was made in hopes that people would confuse it with Tuber Simulator. And to be fair, this does feel like a great value version of Tuber Simulator. Yes, these games are very different in many ways, but this truly feels like the intent of the game, or at least to me. In Idle Simulator, the art and music is generic and uninspired, and honestly, the entire game feels this way. There's also no voice voiceovers, and whenever you see this low quality star, you can also see a tiny line they forgot to erase in Photoshop, and none of these problems exist in Tuber Simulator. The art and music are incredibly well done, Felix himself voice acts, and the game gushes with charm and personality. And like I said, idle Tuber doesn't. I'm sure there's references to Sunday's YouTube channel, which is cool if you're a fan, but as far as charm goes... That's it. Jax Films is another OG YouTuber who has made many different comedy series over the years. One of his most well-known and at this point's longest running series is called Yai, which stands for Yesterday I Asked You. In Yai, he asks his audience random questions and he reads the funniest answers out loud. Earlier this year, he made a video game based on this series called Be Funny Now. All you do in it is answer questions just like in the series. So I hate to say this because Jack is literally one of my favorite people on YouTube and a huge inspiration inspiration for me, but I am not a fan of this video game. And given the mixed reviews on Steam, people seem to agree with me. The game really does feel like a watered-down version of Jackbox. The questions are okay, but public lobbies don't always lead to the funniest answers. And with only one game mode, it gets old very quickly. Not to mention I'm not a fan of the art style. I love Jack, and this game really could have been so much more, but it doesn't feel like he put any of his personality into it, if that makes any sense. Like Jack's a charismatic and funny guy. Imagine him doing literally any voiceovers for this game. It would automatically make it way more charming, but instead it feels kind of lifeless. I tried playing it again just now for the video, and it took over seven minutes for me to load into a lobby, and once I did, I answered one question and then there was a glitch that skipped the results. So anyway, unfortunately I don't think many people are playing this game, and maybe I was even paired with bots in my match, who knows. It was more active when it was brand new, but to be fair, this game really is not that old. It's free to play on Steam and mobile devices with cross-platforming, so if you're bored I feel like it is worth downloading at least once to play with your friends, but not much more than that. In 2020, he also released a board game based on the series as well. It acts very similar to the video game, but like I said earlier, I don't intend to cover any board games today, and that's mostly because I just haven't played any of them. However, from the videos I watched of Be Funny Now, and from the board game, I feel like this type of game just works better in a board game format, unless you have a bunch of different game modes which Be Funny Now just doesn't. So there's a Gangnam Style game I want to talk about. <laughs> Gangnam Style is a K-pop song by Psy. I know Psy is not a YouTuber, but his music video went insanely viral thanks to YouTube, and was even the most viewed video on the entire website for the longest time, so I figured it fits well in this video. There are some non-official Gangnam Style games out there that I found, but I believe the one I'm going to be showing off is the official one. It seems to be a short minigame collection that takes place in very various locations from the music video. In the first minigame, you just go back and forth to avoid the chickens until you reach the top of the screen. In the second one, you throw the chickens at the elevator guy a certain amount of times. And the rest of the five levels that I could find were just different versions of those minigames. There are more levels, but I couldn't find any footage of them online. And the game is no longer available for download, so I can't play it myself. There's also an upgrade shop, but that's all I can find. Regardless, I think you get the idea. This game is not very elaborate or exciting. Pen Pineapple Apple Pen is a viral music video by Japanese performer Piko Taro. Again, no, he's not a YouTuber, but this video is sitting at over 400 million views, so I figured I would talk about it. Because if I don't talk about it today, when will I get the chance to? The game, appropriately named Pineapple Pen, is still available for download to this day. It starts off with an ad for a different mobile game before the menu even pops up, which is always a good sign and never a red flag. The game's very simple. All you do is tap the screen with careful timing to hit the fruit with your pen, and sometimes even combine the fruit together. The guy from the video chimes in often, and yes, it gets annoying fast. Oh. 
pen pineapple apple pen. There's a couple different game modes that add a bit of variety, but in my opinion, this old gets very old very fast. Like I said at the beginning of the video, there are many YouTuber games that I have already covered in other videos, so I highly recommend you check them out if you enjoyed this video. And again, let me know if there are other YouTuber games that I haven't talked about in the comments down below. And if this video does well enough, I'll make another video covering them. But those are all of the games I'm talking about today. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you all have a fantastic Tuesday.